Good evening, good morning and welcome to another Sacred Pause Meditation. In your usual way, please open sacred space. For those of you that are new to meditation, it's simply setting the intention. It can be for a quiet time, a sacred pause, a sacred time in your day. And just take a breath, center into your body. Maybe you've put a candle on or some incense. Maybe you've just gone to a quiet part of the room, the house or into the garden. Maybe you sat under a tree or maybe you want to visualize that you sat under a tree or by a lake or wherever you are. And just take a breath in. And as soon as we take awareness to our breath, we begin to find a focus. We begin to find peace. And for those of us that have experienced inner peace, inner quiet, inner calm, it's such a beautiful feeling. For those of you that haven't, it will come, that's a promise. Mindfulness and meditation are one of the massive keys to finding your inner peace, your inner quiet, your inner stillness. So just take your attention to your breath. Take your attention to being peaceful. And if your ego mind wanders off, the ego mind is the protector self. The ego mind protects us from all hurt. Just allow yourself to just get back and focus again. Just as we may be learning to ride a bike, sometimes we lose our focus and fall off. Meditation is just the same. Just as we do when we're watching our weight and we maybe don't always eat as healthy as we can and the following day we just get back on the diet again. Life is exactly the same. It's just consistent dedication, determination, commitment to ourselves. And in this case, commitment to meditation and our spiritual journeys. So earlier today, I found a huge caterpillar in the conservatory. It really was one of the biggest caterpillars I've ever seen in my whole life. I was astounded. To be honest, when I first saw it, I did wonder if it was a baby snake. We do have snakes in the United Kingdom. And having been in Bali for eight months, and there were plenty of snakes there, you never kind of lose the kind of appreciation or awareness of them. So having two cats in the house, I was aware that Indeed, if it was a baby snake, that it could bite and injure one of the cats. And as I was trying to get the cat away from the creature, for both of their safety, I began to think, why has this creature come into the house? How has it got in here? And I began to wonder at its beauty with its beautiful black spots. I immediately trusted that the creature wouldn't be harmed and neither would it harm the cat. And then I realized that I was perfectly safe. I realized that my trust was that I would get this creature to safety. I'm very lucky to live with a 
beautiful garden and beautiful fields and trees beyond that. So it was easy for me to place this creature in safety. One of the things I didn't do was to judge. There are snakes in England that can bite. They certainly won't kill you, but they can hurt you for sure. And the size of this caterpillar was really quite astounding to me. And of course, because the cat nudged it, I could see its underside and it was clearly a caterpillar, not a snake. Many of you in meditation are aware of power animals, spirit animals, the dove for peace, the snake for transformation, a snake sheds its skin. Snakes are about protection as well. And of course, a butterfly is all about transformation. So recently, I had some paperwork to sort out when I came back to the United Kingdom. And I've recently had to face a lot of my fears about IT technology. And believe you me, they have been very, very big fears. But in facing those fears, it's brought transformation. So in this sacred pause meditation today, let's have a look at your transformation. All of us are facing unknown changes with a COVID. And one of the things that struck me about this butterfly and the size of the caterpillar, because that will indeed become a butterfly. It's going to be huge. So if you were a butterfly, what colours would you be? Could you have big wings or would you be tiny? Would you be blue and simply one colour or would you have many colours? What would you have done had you seen the caterpillar? Would you have given it love or would you have panicked? Would you have wanted to put it in a jar and contain it and perhaps squeeze the life out of it? Would you have made a judgment on that butterfly and the judgment on the caterpillar? Would you have been frozen with fear rather than being able to move it to the garden? The fear of IT used to terrify me. But by facing our fears, we can transform and transcend them. And our fears are usually from learned behaviours, conditioned responses, conditioned beliefs or limiting belief systems. Transformation can be amazing. So as I put the caterpillar in the garden, I sent it a huge amount of love. It certainly didn't look like the cat had injured it with its claws or its teeth and the cat was okay, so. Transformation. So just take a few moments to think about how your life has transformed. Maybe how meditation has transformed your life. Maybe how many teachers have transformed your life. And I'll leave you there for a few moments while you just ponder upon that word transformation.
we transform, when we live in a world without judgment. We transform when we're ready to transform. I can't rush that caterpillar to become the butterfly, but I can nurture the caterpillar. I can feed it the right foods. I can place it in the right environment. And it's funny how today has brought me many examples of transformation. I've known many people be judgmental about emigrants and illegal immigrants. And years ago as a homeopath, I was invited to work at the AIDS clinic in Liverpool. There we treated many illegal immigrants from Africa. Many who had got AIDS from being raped in the prisons by the guards. Many of them who had witnessed all their families being murdered. Did I judge these people? No. Did I judge the guards and the rapists? No. Because they need more love than we do. And the only answer to all of this is love. Did I fear getting AIDS by being in the company of these people? Of course not. Did I do my best by these people? By not judging them when they had been judged incredibly so, not just as illegal immigrants in a foreign country that's so much colder and wetter than Africa. These people needed love. People who will hurt other people are usually people who hurt themselves. Many of you may have heard the term hurt people hurt. So let's take a moment to send healing to all those people who have judged us harshly in the past. Let's take a moment for all of those instances when we have been judged harshly in the past and perhaps when we too have judged others. And that's always through misunderstanding or lack of wisdom, lack of experience, lack of knowledge. So I send love to all of you right now. Total unconditional love. And please just take a few moments to embrace that loving kindness. Feel that loving kindness in your body. Maybe you feel it in the heart space, the throat. Maybe you feel it everywhere. But when we practice loving kindness, this world becomes a much better place. Please stay in this space, in this place, as long as you want to. Maybe you feel you're surrounded by a beautiful colour, maybe pink or green, which are, of course, the colours of the heart centre. Namaste, my dear friends. Namaste. Om Shante, Shante, Shante.